What is up, my friends, and welcome to another edition of the XFL Week in Review. I am your host, Mark Perry, editor of XFL News Hub. On this week's show, we got an exclusive interview with the team that wants to bring an XFL franchise to the city of Birmingham, Alabama. We talk to them exclusively on our channel, on our show, and see how what they think, and they basically making their pitch as to why there should be an XFL team in Birmingham, Alabama. You're going to want to check that out. Plus, we give the latest player transactions, who's going where, who's got cut, who got signed. We'll keep you uh, in the know and all of that stuff. And plus, your social media and phone calls will get to them too this week. So how do you get in touch with the show? You email podcast at XFL News Hub with your MP3 or videos or call 888-430-7692, extension 3, to leave us a voicemail. We got those. Remember to leave us a review on Apple Podcast, and we'll read it on the show. We really appreciate that. Question of the week, we're gonna keep that open. There's a lot, you guys have a lot to say about what's going on, so just leave us your thoughts and comments. We have a jam-packed show. I'm very excited. We're doing this week in, week out, all the way through. It should be an interesting week in the XFL. Do we potentially get a TV deal announcement this week? We'll find out. So without further ado, folks, let's just get into the week that was the XFL. So we're here with Mary Beth Ford and William Parker, and they represent the Birmingham area, and they're interested in getting an XFL team. So I guess why don't you guys kind of introduce yourself and then tell us why Birmingham wants an XFL team. Well, I'm Mary Beth Ford again, and I work alongside President Parker on sports tourism activities for the city of Birmingham, and we definitely got our eyes on the XFL, so happy to be here with you today. Cool. Now, William, you saw uh, we saw your quote, and how did you kind of, what sparked your interest in trying to bring the XFL to Birmingham? We, uh, we've been trolling around uh, watching uh, activities with the XFL and the proceedings, uh, even uh, when they played last year, and also with the uh, bankruptcy and then the, the uh, elevation out of bankruptcy. Uh, so we're always trolling around looking for opportunities. And so uh, we just felt this would be a great fit with the XFL, City of Birmingham, with The Rock uh, and uh, their investment team. Uh, we thought it's a great fit. And uh, we love football here in Birmingham. We love football here in the state of Alabama. And so I think it's a great fit. We're looking forward to uh, having one of the teams here and making the XFL part of the Birmingham family. Now, when the initial run of the XFL started, did anybody from the XFL reach out to your city or did you guys reach out to them? Did you Were you part of that bidding process in the beginning? We were not. During that time, we were part of the uh, Alliance of American Football. Uh, family and uh, and so uh, knowing that they wouldn't uh, they were interested you know looking for other cities uh, we were involved with a, an, another marriage uh, we've since divorced that marriage and now we're looking yeah. to uh, get remarried and we want to get remarried with the XFL and I think the most important thing is is that it indicates that Birmingham uh, is you know loves football and so we're football country here in the state of Alabama uh, especially with the you know 45 minutes away you have the University of Alabama you also have the University of Auburn uh, we have great institutions here Alabama State Alabama and m uh, Tuskegee Miles College so we have a lot of, of, of the love for football, and I think that symbolizes what the XFL is about. That symbolizes what uh, what the uh, the Rock is about, and so uh, we think it's a great marriage ready to to uh, be made. And uh, so we just got to dance down the aisle a little bit. All right. So, what were some of the numbers that you guys were having as far as attendance going for the AAF when they were there? Because I know, and, and I've spoken before about this, that the XFL wanted to stay away from cities that already had an AAF team because they didn't want to compete. But that doesn't mean that they wouldn't have, or they, would, they wouldn't right now. So what kind of numbers was Alabama getting as far as attendance and interest? During the uh, first couple of weeks, uh, uh, we were averaging probably around 17 
uh, to 20,000. And that was uh, also having in, in, the, in March, uh, early April, uh, the, there was inclement weather. It was a, a strong cold front and also rain, but the fans still uh, participated and, and tailgated and, and uh, we were strongly involved with the Birmingham Iron. And so I think that just indicates that Birmingham uh, loves football year round. Uh, we're very, very supportive of the Birmingham Iron. We've had other teams in the past, but I think it's just the fact that I think this is a great marriage ready to happen. Uh, and we just, um, you know, we need to get that phone call from The Rock and, and from uh, from the other investor team to make sure that uh, we can talk about Birmingham, what Birmingham has to offer, and all the fact that we love football and we're the football capital of the South. And, um, you know, no better place to be than Legion Field. And, uh, and just the love of football is here year round. And so we're just waiting on the XFL to come in and uh, let's, let's celebrate football as we move forward in the next couple of years now what's the you go ahead so i've always i felt recently that the xfl has this resurgent effect i mean since 2001 they've been doing this dance it's like they kind of fade away from the forefront and then right now they're back in focus so I, I feel like this is a prime opportunity especially for our city um to bring an opportunity of that type here so What's now with your city? You uh, there's a new stadium being built. So you talked about Legion Field, and then now there's something new coming. Protective Stadium, which will be finished um, at the during the fall of next year, and it's about a forty is it a forty three thousand seater, um, whereas Legion Field we can seat over seventy thousand. So, and who is this? Cool. Who's gotcha. And who is who is playing in the new stadium? What's the plan there? The home of, of uh, UAB football uh, will be the primary tenant there. So what we, we have a unique opportunity where we, we're a city with two with multiple stadiums. Uh, and so we want to use those as city assets to be able to compete and have multiple events going on simultaneously throughout the entire year, uh, whether uh, you know it's, it's fall or, or, or spring. So I think we have a lot of things to offer as it relates to uh, sports and it relates to football. And uh, we're just uh, we're waiting and, and, and to kind of roll out uh, how does how do we uh, multitask with having two major stadiums here um, and knowing that part of the new normal now is is probably going to be 50 percent capacity. Uh, so that still will be able to have a great crowd. Uh, at Legion Field, and, and also we can have that conversation about the new stadium as well. Uh, but I think the main thing now is Birmingham needs to have a seat at the table, and I think we'll be able to sell uh, the city of Birmingham, sell the state of Alabama, and I think uh, uh, let them know that uh, we love football and we're great supporters, great fans of, of the XFL, and looking forward to an opportunity. But we need that. We need the opportunity to to be able to uh, to uh, sell Birmingham. And so that's the next step. And so I'm sure The Rock and others, uh, Ms. Garcia and uh, the uh, other investor group uh, are listening or hopefully I'm, I'm sure they're tuning in. I think you have a great, um, a great thing here at X, I mean, XFL News Hub. And I want to thank you as well. Uh, but we just want the opportunity uh, to be able to uh, talk about Birmingham, how Birmingham can complement what the XFL and their vision of, of looking at how do you make it 3.0, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, where it's very interactive, whether it's having a year-round, uh, you know, reality opportunities. Uh, and so we just need that opportunity to to talk about Birmingham, how Birmingham fits into their model, uh, whether it's going to be, you know, which cities. But I think we can make the case, at least in the southeast, that if you want uh, high ratings, I think if you look at it uh, consistently, uh, this, uh, Birmingham and the state of Alabama loves football. The ratings are high on TV plus the crowd excitement, the fan engagement. Uh, so this is just uh, XFL, you know, would be part of our family here in the state of Alabama. And uh, we're just excited and looking forward. But we need that opportunity to have the conversations about why Birmingham. And I think the fact that the AAF and other teams have selected Birmingham, we need that opportunity and that next step to be able to have a real uh, in-depth conversation on why Birmingham. Uh, you know, we're not hating on other cities uh -huh. We want to talk about the positives uh -huh. and we want Birmingham to be a part of the eight teams uh, as they look to re restructure, uh, but also on expansion. Uh, you know, the fact that we're a part of the AAF indicates that Birmingham has a you know love for football. And I think with ratings, 
fan engagement uh, and the support that we provide, I think those ingredients for great marriage with the XFL. So uh, we need that phone call. We need the meeting and we need it um, sooner rather than later so that we can start talking about and being a part of the XFL family moving forward. All right. Now, one, one last thing. Now, everybody's talking about seasons in a bubble. Um, how how would Birmingham uh, handle if they needed to do an XFL season in Birmingham with all eight teams? And well, Yeah, let me give you breaking news. That's another pitch we wanted to do is that, listen, we have the best medical uh, personnel here at, at the UAB, uh, uh, which has which is known for its medical uh, uh, expertise here and in, in within the country. And so I think we have great medical personnel that's recognized around the world. Uh, UAB, uh, uh, University of Alabama in Birmingham, great medical team, great medical staff, medical hospitals. So I think that is a great indicator as far as on the cutting edge of, of dealing with COVID-19, uh, working uh, hand in hand with, with governmental agencies. So I think that gives us an indicator how we will make sure that uh, we could uh, be on the cutting edge of, of uh, you know, as it relates to the bubble. Uh, we want to invite and even have that conversation of making sure that uh, if there is a bubble in 2021, bring it to Birmingham. I know other cities, you know, they've been in conversations with, but we need the opportunity. And I, and I promise you, uh, I think everybody will, uh, will agree that we'll have Birmingham to be a part of the XFL family. Great, great. Well, there you have it. All right, we'll thank uh, Mary Beth Ford and William Parker, their pitch for Birmingham, Alabama as part of the XFL. I uh, appreciate you guys taking the time, and good luck. All right, thank you. We'll be listening All right. as we move forward. Right. Thank you. All right, let's take a look at the latest player transactions. These are guys that were part of the XFL, that went to the NFL. Some got cut, who signed. We'll kind of give you the latest update in the last month. But if you head over to XFLNewsHub.com, you can check out our XFL to NFL player tracker where we have all 44 players have signed either with the an NFL team or a CFL team. Some have been cut. We track all of that on our list. So head over there. On a daily basis, we're always tracking these guys. We'll see how things go. I think we might be in the clear as some guys are starting to sign with teams rather than be cut. But it's definitely over the next couple weeks, we will find out if some of these XFL guys actually make the final roster. So some news. First up, the Seattle Seahawks have waived Los Angeles Wildcats guard Cleo McKenzie. That took place at the end of July. He was cut and he hasn't signed with any team yet. The Houston Roughnecks uh, tackle Juwan Bushell Beatty. He was cut by the Panthers in August, the beginning of August. He was an early signer in May. He didn't make the cut there. Some other standouts that were cut on August. That was kind of around the time where the beginning of August was Dietrich Nichols. We'll get back into him in a, a minute. He's defensive back for the Houston Roughnecks. He signed in March with the Saints. Dwayne Hendricks, a linebacker for the St. Louis Battlehawks, also signed with the Steelers. He got cut. Uh, Tyree Tari Cannell, a safety for America's team, D.C. Defenders. Uh, he was cut by the Steelers as well. And Christian Kuntz, a long snapper for the Dallas Renegades. He was also cut by the Steelers. So both Cannell, Kuntz, and Hendricks are part of the nine players that signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they all, those three got cut. And then Dietrich Nichols signed with the Saints. He got cut. We'll get into that in a second. Arian Springs got waived. Los Angeles Wildcats corner Arian Springs. He got waived. First, he was put on the COVID list, and then as soon as he was taken off the COVID list, the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, cut him as well. These teams want to get their camp rosters down to 80 players, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Spring was one of nine former XFL players to sign with the Steelers, so now they're down to about five, I think, now. Seattle Dragons recently, this was August 9th, signed Michael Dunn, the Cleve, uh, he, a guard. He signed with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, the Browns signed him to a one-year deal. The team lost several offensive linemen due to the COVID opt-outs for the season. So Dunn is the first 
XFL player to sign with the Cleveland Browns. Dietrich Nichols signs with the Miami Dolphins. So he got cut by the New Orleans Saints. And then he just signed recently, this was August 13th, signed a one-year deal with the Miami Dolphins. So he was cut. He was one of the first guys to be cut by an NFL team only to re-sign with another one later. The Houston Roughnecks, one of my favorite player defensive players, Demarcus Gates, got cut by the Vikings. That was also on the 13th. He signed with the team in March and was let go so that the Vikings could activate offensive lineman Oli Uho from the COVID reserve deal and to keep their roster at 80. So he was waived. I really like Gates. He was part of Mike Mitchell's 2020 All-XFL team. He's one of my favorites. Did I point that out? So I'm surprised that he got cut. And finally, a couple days ago, St. Louis Battlehawks tight end Connor Davis got signed by the New York Jets. thing with him is he didn't really play in the XFL. He signed with the Battlehawks after they lost their tight end, Cole Hunt. He was placed on injury reserve February 12th, and he was a Team 9 guy, probably more of a blocking guy, but there was no real stats on him. So there you have it. Those are all the XFL player transactions up to this date on August 17th, 2020. What's up, XFL Army? If you're a fan of the XFL News Hub and you have a telephone, which I know all of you do because you're sitting there playing on your phones all the time, then why not download the XFL News Hub app? That's right. It's on iTunes. It's on Android. We have an Android version and an iPhone version of the XFL News Hub app. So what do you get? You get the latest news from XFL News Hub, the premier source of XFL news in the universe. Plus, you get push notifications when we have breaking news. You be the first to know. You can leave a comment on some of the news right from your phone. Plus, you get this podcast on your phone as well. Remember, you can leave us reviews on the Google Play Store or iTunes. It links to other social media, our other social media accounts, and so much more. Be in the know. I know you're on your phones. People are on their phones all the time. They never get off their phones. So why not just download the XFL News Hub app on your Android or iPhone today? All you need to do is go to the Google Play Store or iTunes and just type in XFL News Hub. That's XFL News Hub. Download our app on your phone today. Now that we have the XFL 3.0 back in session... Fans are asking about potential relocation of some of these teams, so we figured we'd give you an update and tell you which teams might move and which teams do not and what rumors are true and what rumors are not. So first off, let's talk about the Tampa Bay Vipers. The Vipers have been rumored before the league shut down that they potentially could be moving to Orlando. The talk was the reason why the XFL didn't hit places like Orlando or Alabama or San Diego is because there was already AAF teams in there. And when they were planning the league and putting things together, they assumed that the AAF would still be in existence. So they never touched those markets. Now that that has changed, the Vipers were rumored just before the league to was to close that they potentially would move to Orlando. As far as Seattle Dragons go, they're not going anywhere. One of the highest rate attendance, aside from St. Louis. Seattle Dragons are staying put. There's no question about that. LA Wildcats, they're kind of the most wild card of all these teams that might relocate. There was talk of maybe adding another team in San, Di- and, um, San Antonio. Maybe, I-, I know Josh Johnson threw out there to the Rock. Hey, why don't you move the Wildcats to Oakland? Or maybe a San Diego as a potential spot. The big wild card is where L.A. Wildcats will play. I don't think that they would stay in the L.A. market. They were one of the weaker markets. And honestly, I mean, they can't even handle two NFL teams, let alone one. I'm not sure where the Wildcats might land. They might stay in L.A. and just move at a different venue. That's a possibility, too. But the wild card and all of these relocation things is potentially, I'm not really sure where the Wildcats will wind up. Could they move to Texas or would they stay in California? That's to be determined. The Houston Roughnecks, 
top team, top city for the XFL with their championship game there and their training camp. The Houston Roughnecks are not going anywhere. St. Louis Battlehawks draw the biggest crowds. They were thinking maybe they might even have 50 to 60,000 fans at some of the games at the end. They're not going anywhere. The New York Guardians, they're not going anywhere. They might move to a different facility. That was rumored. The Guardians might move, uh, not really sure where, but maybe to um, a soccer stadium, perhaps, an MLS stadium that they might have nearby, but not play at the at the Meadowlands Jets Giants Stadium. That could be out. So like the Guardians and the LA Wildcats, they might just be looking at a different venue though L.A. might move to a different town, but the Guardians are just looking for a potential smaller venue. D.C. Defenders, they're not going anywhere. They'll stay at Audi Field. Everything worked out great there. Thank goodness we have the Beer Snake. Hopefully that can return in 2021. The last one that was just complete wrong information, 100%, the Dallas Renegades is not going anywhere. They're not moving The whole thing about them taking the stickers down and that means that they're moving. Well, they were doing that across all of the places because the league folded. So, of course, they were going to take the stickers down. That doesn't mean that the Dallas Renegades are going anywhere. My sources tell me that Dallas is staying in Dallas and that's just much to do about nothing. Just some bad internet gossip and rumors. So, Dallas isn't going anywhere. Whether they stay at the same stadium, I think that that would be, I think they would still stay at the same stadium. So Tampa Bay Vipers, quick recap, could potentially move to Orlando. LA and New York could move to different stadiums. Pretty much everywhere, everybody else in the XFL is staying put. And they probably will most likely, 100%, not be any new teams for the 2021 season. So there'll be no expansion, but who knows what will happen in 2021. Or 2022, but who knows what's going to happen in 2021 either. All right, let's check out some of our social media of this week with Jordan Tom Mugan, who will be the starting quarterback and the Battle Hawks. Scott Anthony says if they bring Nick Fitzgerald back, he should fit their system well with his mobility. Yeah, now that Tamu is gone, I think I think you're right. I think they'll still stick with the guys that they brought in. And I think Nick Fitzgerald was somebody that was had a lot of mobility that he could potentially be the starting QB. I'd be really curious if they have a redraft of who they could potentially get. I don't even know. I, I wouldn't say t- uh, Jordan is a, as a 100% lock to make the Kansas City Chiefs roster either. I mean, I definitely think P.J. Walker is, but Tiamu, I'm not sure. Should the XFL and AAF merge? Jason says, how can you merge something that no longer exists, the AAF? Well, because you can just essentially take their assets and their names. That's kind of the idea there. Nahim Nurg says, San Antonio, Birmingham, Orlando, San Diego would be great. The AAF was was a good idea, but not well executed. That's what I'm saying. Bring in those names and then just change the logos up a bit. Fans, I think, would get pretty excited about that. Some, you know, Take the good markets. Uh, Jim Jones says, if all football leagues, their remaining entities, property, etc., should merge, pool any of the remaining resources, and form a viable alternative to the bleep turd-ridden NFL. Anything that could take down the NFL, I support 100%. Okay. As long as they keep the politics out of sports, Daryl, AF, CFL, and XFL all join forces. That would be interesting. Tom Ramsey, no. The only thing we learn from the AAF is that San Antonio will support a team. And I think that's it's just basically taking the team names and the low cities, and that's it. Joe, XFL and AAF would be a great jo- good joining. More cities, fans, options to keep one league going. Tom Sui Lemke, whatever brings football, more football. I think some AAF rules were good. I don't even think they would touch the AAF rules. Jason says they should buy the CFL. Uh, I don't think anybody wants a CFL right now, including Canada. Brad says, whatever takes down the NFL. Okay, everybody hating on the NFL. 2021 season, XFL season may be needed more than we thought. Josh says, 2021 is the most logical to get back to playing football. The last thing we want is to rush the XFL back. Totally agree with you there. Greg, Nestor, I can't wait until the XFL starts playing ball again, professional football by men who love to play the game versus 
Check Cashing Entertainers. JMO, just my opinion. Derek, would they do a draft to fill teams again, or are the teams pretty much set minus a few players? Absolutely, there would be a draft again to fill in those holes. And plus, you know, I'm sure there's guys on last year's team that they would probably want to get rid of. Colby, would love to watch them if they leave the politics at the door, don't do anything politically they want, not just wearing the uniform or taking part in business-related activities. Jacob, they need to wait until 2022. That's what made the XFL 2020 so successful. I think that they can absolutely restart it. That was the plan. Remember, this was basically the XFL's offseason during the summer. They could have a draft. They could have training camp in, in November. It would be a tight window, but one that I think, you know, and a lot of these people aren't doing anything right now. Some of these coaches are just kind of sitting. A lot of people are waiting. And if you just have a, a season in a bubble, you essentially only need just the players and the coaches and, you know, team presidents maybe, and that's it, and a very skeleton staff for the first year. A lot of reaction there. More Paul Wright, no more politics. That seems to be a theme with all you guys. Uh, we got a cool XFL Houston Roughnecks PJ Walker highlight mix. Corey says he looked, like a younger Cam, it would be neat to see if we could play both Teddy and him like the Saints do. That's one of the reasons why I'm absolutely excited about the NFL season. I want to see P.J. Walker out there and some of the other XFL guys, which we are tracking on XFL News Hub. You can check that out. With college football on ice, push begins to play the XFL in the fall. That ain't happening. It would be, Michael Darling agrees. He said it would be slop. You can't put together a good product in a short notice. The season that didn't complete really only had one good team, three maybe, four decent, and others were just okay. Jim Jones. Basketball had minor leagues in the Continental CBA. Pro football has a minor league of sorts with the Canadian Football League. The extra fill should be a standalone league. That's why the NFL Europe, WALF, and UFF were abysmal disasters. Had the USFL stayed in spring uh, configuration, they would have been around the XFL. Would have been a pipe dream, true. Don't make the mistake from leaving the spring and jumping into the fall talk. If they lock down again, they how will the XFL survive? Good point there. Uh, Ricky Yates, I really don't believe the future is paying college athletes. I believe it's development of a minor league system in basketball and football. Top athletes should get paid, and they shouldn't have to pretend to be students. That's a good point there as well. On to our uh, YouTube channel. Spock B says, hey, Dwayne, The Rock, my main man, you should have a 16 teams XFL, Seattle Dragons, Wildcats, Guardians, Defenders, Roughnecks, Vipers, Battlehawks, Renegades, and add eight teams, Phoenix Scorpions, Minnesota Blizzard, Las Vegas Blackjacks, that's an interesting name, Chicago Beasts, Miami Blaze, Denver Rampage, Atlanta, then that didn't finish. Interesting names. I like that. Uh, let's see. Talking about The Rock, Robert says he'll go broke just like Tyson and Ali. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Caleb says, yo, PJ Walker is excellent QB. He's always on target. Talking about our highlight reel. David says, XFL to San Diego. That's a lot of people who are talking about that. Uh, Metcraft, there is a lot of college players whose hopes of NFL careers ruined by COVID stopping their last shot to prove themselves. Maybe the XFL can get, they can get another chance. Absolutely agree with that. Joseph says, well, I stopped watching MLB, NFL, soccer, NASCAR, etc. since they all have lost their balls and tilted. Uh, okay. Now we're going back to politics and there you have it. Some messages there on the Twitter uh, Messiah the Prolific says, from the announcement of the AF upon waiting for the XFL season to start, I always viewed these leagues destined to merge. Now that the alliance has failed, it's a perfect opportunity to acquire both uh, properties for the expansion of entities. Right there. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, Josh says, there will be some for sure. It's, it could be a mass exit. It's like playing out the, the bottom. Uh, he's talking about the CFL shutdown. There will be some for sure. There's not going to be this mass exit like play, like being played out. To be the bottom line is uh, either of these leagues will play out with fans. 
We are still assuming they'll play in 2021, not just wait until 2022, the XFL that is. So yeah, I mean, I th- I think we could see potentially some CFL guys, but I don't think a ton. I don't, th- toxic sh- theft, I don't th- like the XFL playing in 2021 because they need to redo everything and get coaches that have playbooks ready for the players so that it doesn't look like XFL one. I don't know about that. Uh, Juco FB in Louisiana CFLs cancel its season. Do you think the XFL will make a push for these SARS? I think some of them talking about Oliver Luck, Bobby, 100% 100% XFL. I hate it. I feel Oliver Luck did a fantastic job, but after everything that happened, I don't see him coming back to the league, unfortunately. We had reported, put that out there, that basically Oliver Luck is not coming back. Basically, both parties, they're just not interested, so we will not see uh, the Oliver Luck return to the XFL. Let's get into some of your emails. First up, Jensen says, Hey Mark, with the new ownership of the XFL 3.0 version, do you think that the new owners are considering keeping Dallas Renegades a team for the 3.0 run? Absolutely. Dallas is not going anywhere. They're not moving. They're not doing anything. They just took some stickers down. Dallas is in going to stay in Dallas, potentially probably at the same stadium. That was a false rumor put out there on the internet that was not taken down when it should have been. And I'll just leave it at that. Gregory checking in says, thank you for see- uh, talking about The Rock. Mah- much mahalo, Dwayne Rock Johnson, saving the XFL. Thank you for saving the XFL dreams. Reality dreams is means real life dreams for the XFL family. The love of football will be a successful for their city state. Believe, trust, honor, XFL for life. Mahalo. Greg Gabayolo checking in there. Jason says, hi there. I guess a question for you next Q&A. Any chance LA keeps their team, the relaunch? That's a question. I don't know what they're going to do with LA. They could potentially move to a different venue, but I think they might move it out of the city. Wildcats and having three teams in Texas would be a stretch. You would still want to have a mar- team in the California market. But also there's a big exodus of people leaving uh, California right now. So I wonder if that is going to be a problem long. Like, I don't know what's going on in California, but there's a lot of people, celebrities leaving California and it's turning really bad there. Do you think that they are going to keep a team there? They have to keep a team in California. It's one of the biggest markets. Jim checking in. Hey, Mark, big fan of your site. Two things I'm really excited about regarding the news of the NFL XFL owners. One, they don't want to be a developmental league for the NFL. I could go on and on about why I'm losing my appetite for NFL being that I'm from St. Louis. Battlehawks are simply amazing. Kurt and his team did an unbelievable job building that organization grassroots wise. 100%. Two, expansion. I'm assuming the XFL will start off with eight teams again. That is basically what it's going to be. I could see maybe the Vipers relocating to Orlando. That's I'm thinking that as well. And LA to San Diego, that's potentially, and I think that would be a good idea. I'm not, Orlando or San Diego should get teams, eight teams to 12 teams in two years or three will work, I think. He's saying the East should be St. Louis, DC, New York, Tampa. East expansion possibilities, Orlando, Chicago, Milwaukee, Birmingham. In the West, Houston, Dallas, Seattle, L.A., West Expansion, San Diego, Oakland, San Francisco, Oklahoma City, San Antonio. I think San Diego, San Antonio, and Oakland are no-brainers. Oakland would be a very interesting one as well. I don't ever want to see the XFL be affiliated with the NFL. I agree with you there. I was really concerned when, you know, the who was going to potentially being the owner. And one of them, at first, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was like, I don't want the NFL. I didn't want the NFL involved in the ownership. I think what we have now with Danny Garcia and The Rock is the best, honestly, better. And I think it's better than having Vince McMahon, to really be honest with you. Uh, I love the new rules. Thought the game was very refreshing. I watched the majority of the game. I just had a great time doing so. I did too. I watched every single game. I truly believe there is a market for spring football. 100%. There is no question. 100%. There is a market for XFL or for a spring football league. So anybody who says no is just being disingenuous and just being a hater. 
Chris from London checking in. I'm more hopeful than confident about the XFL's return at this point. While Redbird, Johnson, and Garcia have plenty of funds available, it's yet to be seen how hard they are prepared to invest. I think these guys are all in. I think the XFL stands its best chance if they can position themselves to be, quote, the only game in town, close quote. I like the season happening when other football isn't, which will happen. Whether it's the fall, it won't be the fall, or the spring, yes. And college football's decision makes it tricky at the moment. Let me tell you something about college football and and college football in the spring. Mark my words, write it down, exclamation point. They're not going to have a college football season. There is no way. These guys don't get paid. And there are so many colleges, you cannot do sports in a bubble. It would be a disaster. Even in the spring, even if you start having, you know, rolling out potential vaccines, it's just too short. It's too late. You you have to vaccinate. It's just not going to happen. I just don't think you'll have a college football season. It's going to, it's just a, that's, that's all going to, we'll see if they can, if colleges can even get through October. I don't think you you have to play sports in a bubble. This year, 2021, the XFL will. I'm not sure about Major League Baseball. I think they've got it kind of figured out. They're going to still run into problems. And we'll see what happens with uh, the NBA and NHL when they try to start up their season after basically just finishing their season. Uh, let's see here. I also like running in moderately big markets where the XFL team got big football attraction. San Antonio, Orlando, and San Diego have proven their viability, outdrawing six of the eight XFL teams, even with an inferior product, and could be great XFL hits in a way that some XFL uh, big cities teams so far haven't been. I rooted for Tampa Bay, but it would be make sense for them to relocate. Looking forward to following XFL News Hub in 2021 and beyond. Thank you, Chris from London, checking in. With some good takes there. All right, let's get to a phone call. Hey, first time caller, fan of the show. My name is Ruben. I'm calling from Compton, California. I've been to several LA Wildcat games before they, the pan- pandemic shut it down. Um, as far as my thoughts on the expansion, I think that San Antonio, Orlando, San Diego, Oakland will be great cities. It kind of buns me out that LA is not a, it's probably not going to be an option. Um, I do enjoy going to Wildcat games, um, but I also think that whoever gets whatever city gets an expansion team needs to think smaller, go to possibly to an MLS stadium. That's it for me. Thank you for the show, and thank you. All right, Ruben, checking in. Thank you. I agree with you. I think I agree on all those st- things, and I think I think they tried to go a little too big in the beginning. I mean, you could get away with having a big stadium in you know those market like like St. Louis and even Seattle, uh, New York and L.A. or New York was not going to be they were not going to fill up that stadium. So I think starting small, having an MLS stadium is is the way to go. It's I loved going to D.C. Defenders games at Audi Field. I love the stadium. Got season tickets right on the field. It was fantastic. We had a great time. Missed some hanging out with some of my homies in our section. Hopefully we'll get back to it again. But yeah, I appreciate the phone call and you're on point. All those cities, that's where I think you could see some action happening. All right, next phone call. Yes, hello, my name is Yes, hello, my name is Jack Stevens and um my question is what do you think about the new XFL ownership? Do you think it's good? What are your thoughts? Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, I am 100% on board with who they have. I actually think that they're better than Vince McMahon as far as ownership group goes. I, I don't think you can get any better than The Rock as far as his draw. The idea that somehow Vince McMahon, you TV companies would rather do business with Vince McMahon than over The Rock, I think is a joke. Because they're all looking at what's happening with SmackDown on Fox, spending these billions of dollars, and the ratings keep getting worse and worse. And, I mean, they're still drawing okay, but the, all the money they spend for that, and it's not looking like it's turning out very well. I think Vince McMahon is a little overrated, but that's I've been following that guy since for 20 years almost as, an, as a wrestling fan and also having owning wrestling websites in the past. So 
but he, I mean, he got it done. Vince got it done along with Oliver Luck and, and Jeffrey Pollock. They got the, this, the league going and, and, you know, I mean, he did, they did bring in ESPN and Fox and ABC. It was a great, it was a great thing and it worked. We'll see. That's going to be the real clout. What kind of deal is the Rock and Danny Garcia Redbird Capital going to bring in? If they bring in a better TV deal, that's it's all going to bottom line is the TV deal. I don't care what they're doing right now. They need to, it's going to be, it's the TV deal. That will be a big tell about this ownership group will be the TV deal. There's no question about it. All right, we want to thank everybody for checking in. We want to thank the team that brought us, talking about the uh, Birmingham, Alabama, as a potential location. What are your thoughts? What do you think about Birmingham, Alabama, as a potential location for an XFL team? Let us know. Remember, if you want to be part of the show, you email podcast at xflnewshub.com or call 888-430-7692, extension 3. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, the whole deal, XFL News Hub. You got our apps. You can download them as well. Working on to upgrade them. Plus, remember, I've told you about in the past, we're working on a fantasy football app as well for exclusive XFL only fantasy football that's coming your way. And remember to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate that. Appreciate that. We'll read it on the show. And you can listen to us anywhere you can find a podcast is you can find us. So make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Do that right now too. And for show notes, xflnewshub.com slash xfl dash podcast. And join our Discord where we have a lot of great chat on there. That, that, that place is blowing up as well. Great show this week. We'll have another show next week. We're just going to keep doing it. Every Mondays-ish time, we'll have a new episode of XFL Week in Review. Thanks for listening. Mahalo. God bless. Put your mask on. And I will see you all later.